Good afternoon. Let's look at uh, Stephen Anderson's statement of faith regarding the salvation. If you go to his website, you'll see salvation is by faith, and as a free gift of God by faith. No mention of calling, no mention of asking. Now let's go to his uh, website. He's talking about the actual uh, Bible way to heaven. Let's see what he says here. If repent of all your sins and you'll be saved. No, also for the sins of the whole world. But there's something that we must do to be saved. The Bible says, it has that question in Acts 16, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And that no prayer. No confession of faith, people. That's where we're told. Paul would have said it there. Confess with thy mouth. Call upon the name of the Lord. No, it's not said there. That's it. He didn't say join That's it. That's it church and you'll be saved, get baptized and you'll be saved, live a good life and you'll be saved, repent of all your sins and you'll be saved. Make a confession of faith and you'll be saved. Call upon the name of the Lord, thou shalt be saved. Right? Didn't say that. No, he said believe. He said believe. And even the most famous verse in the whole Bible that's written on the bottom, I mean, the, the reference is written on the bottom of the cup at In-N-Out Burger. I mean, it's so famous. Everybody's heard of it, John 3, 16. For no calling there. No 10, 13 there. God so loved the world. But we're the ones considered heretics. They run to Romans 10 and twist the scriptures, deny Romans, uh, John 3, 16, deny Acts 16, 31, add on confession. Oh, wait a minute. Romans 10, we forgot about Romans 10. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Believeth. Faith alone. And everlasting means everlasting. It means forever. And Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. The Bible says in John 6, 47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So if you believe on him. No one in John does tell anybody to confess or ask. You believe on Jesus Christ, the Bible says you have everlasting life. You're going to live for... Oh, oh, you forgot, you forgot, you forgot, you forgot uh, confession, Romans 10, 10, 10, 9, 10. Anderson, Romans 10, 13, don't confess, forget that now. You can't lose your salvation, it's eternal, it's everlasting. Once you're saved, once you believe on him, you're saved forever, and no matter what, you can never lose your salvation. Even if I were to go out and commit some awful sin, God will punish me for it on this earth. If I went out and killed somebody today, you know, God's going to make sure I get punished. I'm going to prison or, or far worse or the death penalty. Whatever this earth punishes me and God... He would tell, him, he would tell his people they, they weren't saved. He doesn't believe in eternal security. It's like Brian Daniels does it. In other words, if you, if you believe in a false doctrine, you can murder somebody, but you can't believe in a false doctrine. Then all of a sudden you become unsaved. Well, you're never saved in the first place. God's going to make sure I get punished even more. But I'm not going to hell. There's nothing I can do to go to hell because I'm saved. Well, according to him, the idea is that, well, if you believe a false doctrine, you're never saved in the first place. Like dispensationalism, as he would claim. But if dispensationalist, you must not have been saved. And if I went to hell, God lied because he promised that whoever believeth in him has everlasting life. And he said, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. That's why there are a lot of examples of people in the Bible who did Yeah, say, what's happened in confession and uh, a prayer? Oh, it's only mentioned in Romans 10. <laughs> really bad stuff. Yet they made it to heaven. How? Because they were so good? No, it's because they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Their sins are forgiven. Other people who may have lived a better life in the world's eyes, or maybe even really they lived a better life, they don't believe in Christ. They're going to have to go to hell to be punished for their sins. Trust Christ alone as your Savior. Now, point four. Make you a sinner, realize the penalty of sin. Uh, I believe that, uh, that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again for your sin. For you. Okay, so he leaves out the word sin there, people. I believe that Jesus Christ died, was buried. This is how they try to sneak in Romans 10, 9 and 10. There's no sin there. In his point three, believe that Jesus, Christ, Jesus died. Died for what? He died for your sins. And let me just close on this one thought. One thing. He, that he, but by the way, as I said he goes. He has faith there. Trust Christ alone as your savior. Okay, but he's got a, a three there. Believe that Jesus died. Died. That's not going to save you, people. 
<laughs> you got to believe he died, Jesus Christ died for your sins. This is how they, this is how they get more. This is the chick chat teaches. No, the fact that Jesus died is irrelevant. The point is, is that he died after he did something. He died for our sins on the cross. Then he gave up the ghost. Because he, he said it was finished. And let me just close on this one thought. One thing that I wanted to be sure and bring up today is that there was a question that was asked to Jesus by one of his disciples. And that question was this. Are there few that be saved? That's a good question, right? I mean, are most people saved or is it few that are saved? Now, who here thinks that most people are going to heaven? Most people in this world are going to heaven. Yeah, guess what the answer was? He said, You're not going to get to heaven believing that Jesus Christ died. You have to believe Jesus Christ died for your sins. In Matthew 7, for example, he said, Enter ye in at the straight gate. He said, Because wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. And then he went on to say this. He said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day. His will, the, father, the will of the Father said, You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the will. That's why they don't get into heaven. Because they didn't believe on the on, on, on the Son. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. Judas did that. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And so you see, there are people out there. First of all, the majority of this world doesn't even claim to believe in Jesus. Thankfully, the majority of this classroom claims to believe in Jesus, okay? But the majority of the world does not claim to believe in Jesus. But God warned that even amongst those who claim to believe in Jesus, even amongst those that call him Lord, many will be... It doesn't say that they claim to believe in Jesus. They just say they call him Lord. It didn't say they believed in him. That was the problem. They didn't believe in him. They were using his power. That's like the, uh, uh, the, the seven... Uh, guys who uh, uh, tried to uh, uh, control that uh, demon-possessed man with the name of Jesus. They, didn't, they weren't believers, and they got beaten up by the guy. Jesus, I know, and Paul, I, heard, I know. Who are you? <laughs> who are you? <laughs> He's saying to him, "What if all our, we did all these wonderful works. Why aren't we saved? He's going to say, depart from me. I never you. That's, why, that's because salvation is not by works. And if you're trusting your own works to save you, if you think you're going to heaven because you've been baptized, or if you think you, well, I think you have to live a good life. I think you have to keep the commandments to be saved. I think confession and prayer. They think you're going, they think you're going to heaven with confession and prayer. I think you have to go to church. I think you got to, you know, turn from your sins. You now, if you're trusting in your works. Confession and prayer is a work. Your work. Jesus is going to say to you one day, depart from me. I never knew you. You have to have all your faith in what he did. You have to put your faith in what Jesus did on the cross when he died for you, he's buried and rose again. Die for your sins. What is his problem? He can't say he died, died for your sins. Because he wants to stick Romans 10, 9, 10 in there. You can't stick Romans 10, 9, 10 if you talk about Jesus Christ dying for your sins because it's not in Romans 10, 9, 10. That's your ticket into heaven. If you're trusting all the things, oh, I'm going to heaven because I'm such a good Christian and I do all Well, I made a confession and I quote upon the name of the Lord. All these wonderful things. He's going to say, depart from me. And notice what he said. Depart from me, I never knew you. Not I used to know you. Because once he knows you, remember I mentioned this earlier, it's everlasting, it's eternal. Once he knows you, you're saved forever. But he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. Because if you go to hell, it's because he never knew you. Because once he knows you, he knows you. It's just like my children will always be my children. You know, when you're born again, when you're his child, you'll always be his child. You may be the black sheep of the family. You know, you may be uh, somebody who gets disciplined by God heavily on this earth. You can screw up your life down here, but you can't screw that up. You know, you're saved. It's a done deal. And so that's the main thing that I wanted to present to you about the end times. And we do have just a few minutes for uh, questions about either uh, salvation or about the end times. Okay, here's your sinner's prayer now. He just told you about faith alone. Now, pop up your sinner's prayer. 
Dear Jesus, I know I know that I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to go to hell. But I believe you died on the cross for me and rose again. No sin again. He died, he died for your sins on the cross. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 talks about Jesus Christ dying for our sins. Please save me right now and give me eternal life. I'm only trusting in you, Jesus. If you're trusting in Jesus, why are you asking, uh, uh, asking to save you? You either believe he did save you or he didn't. So I'll pop you your, your, your sinner's prayer that denies faith alone. And uh, no, nowhere is it talked about Jesus dying for anyone sins there. I'm a sinner. I, deserve, I know I deserve to go to hell. I believe you died on the cross for me. What did he do on the cross for you? He paid for your sins. Please save me. Okay, you, you're supposed to believe that he did that. Why are you asking him to save you now? That's the whole purpose of what he did on the cross was to save you. If you believe he saved you or you don't, now you're asking him to do it. Please save me right now. <laughs> save me a week from now. And give me eternal life. Well, that comes automatically, doesn't it, if he saves you? I'm only trusting in you, Jesus. No, you're trusting in a prayer. You're trusting in the words of men. He doesn't say any scripture there. That's it. That's your, that's your, uh, there's the Anderson. It's faith alone. Doesn't mention sin. What Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross. It's talking about Jesus Christ dying. These are the words sins. And then talks about, oh, please, Jesus, uh, uh, I'm asking you to save me. I'm only trusting in you. Well, if you trust in Jesus, what are you asking him for? Please save me. Give me eternal life today. The whole purpose is the fact that you did trust him, what he did for you 2,000 years ago on the cross. So why now, why are you asking him to save you? That's not trust. The whole point is that this is, this is what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross. You're trusting or you're not trusting. Now, what are you asking for? You believe he did or he didn't. So he's not faith alone. It's faith plus a prayer. It's faith plus a sin's prayer, asking, and making, I, I guess, a confession. I'm only trusting in you. I'm trusting in you alone, Jesus. No, you're not trusting because you asked. Please save me. And that means you you have some doubt. What are you asking for? You, you, you believe he did it? Or you don't. So the whole point is this contradiction there. But notice the fact he leaves the word sin out. What is this big thing now of this sinner's prayer? Notice the same thing in Tracks, leaving the word sin out. I know you died for me on the cross. No, he died for your sins on the cross. That's what was the issue with the cross, the sins. They leave that out. Because they can't stick in Romans 10, 9, 10 if they talk about sins, because sin doesn't show up in Romans 10, 9, 10. And so that's how they get that word. Well, he died, so he get the resurrection. So it's a false gospel. Amen. Thank you.